Welcome back to my next playthrough series. This time it's Night of the Living Dead. It's a zombie side game, but it's kind of different than Black Plague and the first zombie side, or zombie side, second edition. Uh, I have the board set up for scene one. There's ten scenes in Night of the Living Dead. Uh, it's a self-contained game, so there's not a whole bunch of expansions and stuff to it, which I really appreciate. Uh, there's some nuances to this version versus, of course, like Black Plague or the first zombie side. Uh, I'll get into the details and stuff as we play. Uh, so this is how the board is set up, and I'll explain how this is all uh, going to happen here when we start playing the scenario. So I have to introduce you to the scenario. There's some special rules. It's very much a zombie side game, but of course these are the, the zombies are not zombies. They're ghouls in this one, and relatives can show up, which mess with uh, your characters. Your characters both ha uh, have a Romero side, which is a black and white side, and then they have a zombie side side to them. And you can see they're quite different. Uh, we start on the Romero side, the black and white side, and there's actually two minis for each character. One is a gray figure uh, for the zombie uh, Romero side, and another is an orange figure for the zombie side side. So we swap them out when that happens. And there's special rules to when a character uh, turns into the zombie side side. Lots of talking, I know. There's some good how-to plays out there for this one. There's some uh, playthroughs as well already, Night of the Living Dead. I thought I'd give this a shot. It looks like a really fun, self-contained little zombie side game. Uh, we'll take a quick look at... Uh, we have our six characters. There's six characters coming to the game. I don't think there's going to be any more. Uh, that's just going to be it. There's Tom, Judy, Helen, Harry, Ben, and Barbara, all from the original movie, of course, uh, Night of the Living Dead. And we're going to take a top-down, high-level view of each of them, uh, and we'll go from there, and then I'll explain the scenario setup, uh, how searching works in the game, what you can find in the game. It's a little bit different, of course, than I said from the regular zombie side. So let's take a look at our characters first. We'll go through them, and then we'll get, uh, I'll show you what you can actually search for, and then we'll take a look at the board again. And I'll explain a little bit. And I'm using the uh, zombie side doors. These do not come with the game. And I just use little blue beads. We have to basically, in scene one, barricade all the windows. So I put a blue bead on every window. So it's kind of easier to see what we need to do. And of course you have the typical zombie side spawn points. There's three of them out on the board, etc. Okay, let's take a look at the characters. All right, I hope this is going to focus pretty well. So we have Tom. He has a tire iron. They're basically seven starting items in the game. One of them is the Winchester 94, but it starts out on the board uh, per this particular scenario. Otherwise, it would have been randomly distributed to one of the six characters. So he starts out with a tire iron, uh, and he's in the, we're in the blue zone. So typical zombie side, we have blue, orange, and then red, and then or orange and ultra red. <laughs> so we've seen this before in Black Plague. I've done that on my channel many times. And here's his orange zombicide figure uh, that goes along with Tom's character. So he starts off with a crowbar. It's just basically a melee weapon. Zero range. You have to be in a range with a ghoul to hit it. Rolls one dice. Hits on a four plus. Does one damage. In this game we do have three different types of zombies and a, and a two special zombies. So I might as well mention that right now. We have the regular sorry, ghouls. We have the regular ghouls, we have the fatty ghouls, and we have the breaker ghouls. And breaker ghouls smash open doors and tear down barricades. Not good. All right, let's take a look at Judy. And so looking at Judy, and I should mention purple is Tom, Judy is blue. Uh, she's got a crowbar, so she's got a melee weapon, rolls one dice, hits on a four plus, does two damage. Of course, fatties, as we know from the other zombie side games, uh, need to have two damage at one time to take them down. And she starts off, of course, with no special abilities in the blue zone. Let's take a look at Helen. All right, and taking a look at Helen, uh, she's got a claw hammer. <laughs> so it's a melee weapon, rolls a die, four plus, uh, does one damage, of course, in the blue zone. And this is her little orange zombicide side character. Uh, and, of course, blue zone, no special abilities. And she is red. Let's take a look at the other three. We've got Harry, Ben, and Barbara left. All right, so up here we have in orange, we have Harry, and he's got a nice table leg. Rolls a die, hits in a four plus one damage. Of course, blue zone, and his orange character there. Uh, not much to say. As we get into them leveling up, say, into the, uh, I guess we'll call it yellow zone, and then 
uh, we'll talk about their special abilities as they come up. We won't do that. There's no point now because no, they don't have any special abilities. All right, let's take a look at Ben. And with Ben, he's got a table leg, even though his picture is showing him with the uh, tire iron. It's randomly distributed, so Ben ended up with a uh, table leg. The really cool thing about this game is you can find some flammable fluid and you can light your table leg on fire and have a torch. And let me tell you, in this game, unlike the other Zombicide games, the torch in this game is absolutely awesome because in Night of the Living Dead, of course, the ghouls don't like flame and they light up like a Roman candle when you uh, torch them. So torches in this game, very, very awesome weapon, melee weapon to get. So we want to get some kerosene, flammable fluid, and light up our table legs as quickly as we can. We'll see that when we search. All right, up last, we'll look at Barbara. And of course, Ben is going to be our green player. And our last character is Barbara. She also has a table leg. So there's three table legs, a tire iron, a crowbar, a claw hammer, and the lovely Winchester 94, which starts out on the board, as I mentioned before. She's going to be yellow player. Uh, and, yeah, not much to say. Uh, of course, like I said, everyone starts out on their Romero side, which is the black and white. You flip them over to their zombie side side. If and when that happens, uh, I'll explain that in the special rules to the scenario. Uh, and we'll take, I guess we'll take a 50,000 uh, view. So there's, I think there's four different sculpts of walkers. They come in four different flavors. There's a couple of them. And the breakers come in two flavors. One's with a brick, the other one's got like a, uh, looks like a table leg or something. And the fatties come in one version. And they're just these big dudes in their swim trunks, I guess. Uh, and we have two special relative uh, models. I must say the plastic in this game is really good too. I like it better than uh, the other zombie side games. I don't know what it is. It's a little, it's it's tough, but it's it's a really nice plastic. Anyway, that's just a side comment. Um, all right, let's go to the main board, and I'm going to explain the things we can search, the things we can craft, and then we'll get into the setup of the game. So this video is going to be introduction and setup because by the time I explain everything. We won't be into gameplay. Gameplay will be in the next episode. So let's get to the main board and I'll start explaining the scenario, the special rules, the things we can search, and what our objective, of course, of is to win the game. All right, so this is the main board. So this is the house. And I'll, I'll, at the end of this introduction, I will read the introduction to this scene uh, so we can uh, set the scene for the next episode, which will be gameplay. And they're just typical six-sided dice as well for that. So things you can actually craft are, I'm not going to show them to you because we'll see them as we play. You can get a scoped Winchester, you can get Ma a shotgun, we can get the torch which is basically a table leg lit on fire and a Molotov cocktail. Those are four things, special things that you can craft in the game and there's nothing else so there's not a ton of things. There are ranged weapons that you can uh, search for and they're different decks. So we got a ranged weapon deck to search for. I'll explain this in a second. We have a melee weapon deck that we can set to search for and we have just a regular house deck which is these brown cards that you can search in any room in the house as long as there's no ghouls in there with you. Uh, I should say each character's three actions as a la most of the zombie side games uh, and you can move, you can search, you can pick up uh, some pieces to make a barricade uh, and such. So we'll get into the actions as we do with them to play the game. You'll see how that works. And then we have this huge shuffled Night of the Living Dead deck, which is basically the spawn deck. Lovely. Uh, and we have three spawn points in this scenario. We have one over here, we have one at the top, and we have one at the side. So there's three of them. And I will say zombies can go right through open windows. They just crawl in. They don't care. They can go through open doors. If the doors close, though, regular walker, sorry, I should say ghouls, can't go through closed doors. They can go through open windows, though. Uh, breakers, on the other hand, when they activate, they will smash open doors. They will tear down barricades. They won't move afterwards, but that's what they will do. Anything in their zone. And the zones are kind of like there's one here, one here, one here. So it's broken up very much like the other zombie side uh, panels that you get. You get six of these double-sided panels in this game. Uh, for the t There's ten scenarios, or ten scenes you can go through, which is basically supposed to go through the entire movie, which is kind of cool. Uh, there's also a car and a truck card for reference. We're not going to worry about that in this scenario, or this scene, because we don't deal with it. And 
our objective is to barricade all 10 windows and have no ghouls in the house. As soon as we do that, we win the game. Not so easily said. Uh, there are some special rules. There are some lumber cards that you find in the house. And on the card it says you get 3 XP if you turn it into a barricade piece. Barricade pieces basically look like this. Uh, and the other side is that. So there are five of these out on the board. There's one here, one here. And you can pick these up as an action and then immediately turn them into a barricade. Uh, when you place a barricade on a window, you get 5 XP. So we kind of have to try to time it nicely. Uh, the idea is going to be everyone, I think we want to keep us in the blue as long as possible. Because a la any Zombicide game, as soon as you start getting to the yellow, into the orange, into the red, very bad things <laughs> start spawning. And you don't want that, of course. So there's that. And picking up the Winchester, I believe, is an action in this room. So the Winchester is in this room right now, just sitting there on the couch or whatever, just lying there waiting for someone to pick it up. Uh, the special rule in this game, to turn to the zombie side side of your player card, you have to give the Winchester to somebody. So the person that gives the Winchester away gets to go to their zombie side side. When a relative shows up through spawn cards, everyone on their zombie side side flips back to their Romero side until the relative is taken care of, and then they can flip back to their zombie side side. And there's different abilities on the different sides. So we'll just take a look at Helen here. So Helen on her Romero side has like nothing in the blue, plus one free search action in the yellow, plus one action in the orange, plus one free melee in the red. However, if you flip her over to the zombie side side, you can see there's a whole bunch of different abilities she can do. So basically, even in blue, she's got nothing on the Romero side. If she flips to the uh, zombie side side, she gets plus one free search action in the blue. So very cool uh, mechanic to keep to keep track of, of course, I will do my best. <laughs> There's six characters I'm playing, so it's going to be interesting. All right, um, I think I'm just going to zoom down a little bit in here. We're going to read the introduction. I think I've covered pretty much everything. It is the opening uh, scenario, so it's not super complex uh, to deal with. So let's read the opening to scene one, and then when we come back in our next episode, we will start right into the gameplay. Right, let's begin. It's, it's scene one, what's happening? And it says, Ben was attacked by an army of ghouls at Beekman's Diner and barely escaped inside a car. However, its tank is running empty. He manages to pull up onto a gas pump, only to realize that it's locked. Staying calm, Ben notices a house nearby and decides to enter it, hoping to find the keys to the pump. Ben finds Barbara, still in shock from all the horror befalling her. A nasty surprise awaits both of them on the second floor as this house's owner met a grisly doom. Not long after, Harry, Helen, Judy, and Tom burst out from the basement, and a short argument ensues over the best course of action to adopt. Everyone agrees, somewhat reluctantly, to barricade the house from the ghouls outside. A couple of other little bits of things to mention here. So in the startup instructions, um, we have Ben and Barbara are out here, just outside the door. Of course, there's a spawn point here. The other four player characters start downstairs. The store is closed. They're in the basement. They're going to be coming up. This little star here indicates this is uh, where the grisly <laughs> remains of the owner are located. It takes two actions to clear that. And then you can search for ranged weapons there, but only if you're on your zombie side side. Okay. There's another uh, door right over here, another room on this section of the board right through here. Same idea, you can open that door, go into that room, and search for melee weapons, but you have to be in your zombie side. side. Huh. So basically, bottom line is we have to collect all these pieces. Uh, we have to find either lumber through searching in the house, or grab up these sort of smashed open barricade bits. Board up all the 11 windows and have no ghouls inside the house to win the scenario. So we're going to try to do that starting tomorrow when we get into the playthrough. Uh, and yeah, we'll see how we do. I'm hoping to keep all the rules straight. Like I said, it's not exactly like a, the Zombie Side Black Plague. There are some little nuances and things they have to keep track of, uh, such as when you turn your uh, table leg into a torch, you do not discard the kerosene with it. You actually just use the kerosene and the table leg. Boom, and that's a free action as well. All right. 
Thanks so much for watching along. Thanks for comments, subscriptions, likes. This is Night of the Living Dead. It's a zombie side game. I'm pretty excited about it. This is scene one introduction. So uh, we'll see you tomorrow for some gameplay.